led a consulting enterprise serving the US government that have also has actually focused uh, on the nexus of the national security community and Hollywood entertainment community for over 20 years. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's puzzling for me because not in a million years <laughs> would I ever put them together. Hollywood and national security. I'm like, what? So, so my, my first question to you, and also, of course, I, I'm going to uh, talk a bit more about your background as we delve into explaining this uh, mysteries about, uh, about uh, uh, your work and, and how you look at the world. Um, so what does national security have in common with Hollywood? Let's start with this one. Yeah, so um, it's a great question. Uh, and uh, on the surface, I think people can sometimes snicker at the question, uh, snicker at the answer. Um, but if you think about it, there's a bunch of things that Hollywood relates to the national security community with. And, and by the way, that history begins back in World War II in earnest. Um, there was a lot of collaboration, a lot of cooperation uh, with Hollywood and the Department of Defense. Think of all the, the, the videos, the movies of, of the updates that um, you'd see, that people would see in theaters of what's going on in World War II. Um, fast forward, uh, I was working with an inst entity called the Institute for Creative Technologies, uh, which is part of the University of Southern California. And, um, and the ICT's mission was to bring different components of research to the Department of Defense. So think graphics, think sound, um, uh, think special effects, but really think about storytelling because it is the narrative that uh, Hollywood uh, does better than anybody else. Um, after 9-11, there was um, a, a... Of course. Sort of <laughs> that, that, that is like a Hollywood scenario anyway. Yeah, and also, right. I have to say also, but you know, uh, and of course, kind of that, that ties in with the narrative. I don't want to interrupt your flow, but I'd like you to, to explain a bit how, why would the Department of Defense need a narrative? And, and like really from Hollywood, I think, you know, your example is kind of clear with 9-11. Is it for them to, inst for inspiration, for future? Okay. Slightly, um, but let's, let me finish the one and I'll go to the other quickly. So on uh, what DOD needs for the Department of Defense is extra, you know, they need help training people. Um, they need help uh, with mission rehearsal. Uh, they need help uh, putting you know, warfighters in simulations that, uh, uh, that seem like they are real. Um, and Hollywood can help do that and through all of those means. With 9-11, the 9-11 Commission report cited lack of imagination as one of the criticisms of the intelligence community around um, uh, around what occurred. Um, I mean, if you think about it, who would think about flying airplanes into buildings? Well, creatives did. You know, Hollywood would. Uh, Tom Clancy wrote a book, you know, Some of All Fears, a few years before that, whereby terrorists flew a plane into the Capitol. Um, and so they, they, the, the intelligence community writ large, the national security community writ large, decided that it, it needed uh, to infuse that creativity uh, into their training and into their processes so that they could help those analysts, they could help those people think about what's next, think more creatively. It's not that they weren't creative, it's that perhaps they just weren't thinking with as broad a lens as they could, to borrow a Hollywood metaphor. 